Hi, my name is Hui Mingu from SciTech Biosciences. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about how to quantitatively evaluate fluorochrome combinations to support highly multiparametric panel design with spectrum flow cytometry. Since I'm going to talk about spectrum flow cytometry and some of you might not be so familiar with this method, I'm going to start with a brief overview of what is this full spectrum approach. In this slide, I have this five laser spectrum analyzer that has total 64 detectors. All the lasers are specially separated and each laser has its own detector module. And inside of each detector module, it has a different number of detectors that allows to cover the whole entire emission range, starting a little bit after each laser line and covers all the way up to 830 nanometers. So when a particle runs through, you are going to see emission signals being displayed like this, with the x-axis being the detectors and the y-axis being the intensities. As you can see, in some detectors, you are seeing more photons, more light, some detectors area you are seeing less, and this happens through all the detector modules. So what the software does next is to stitch these five pieces of information together to form a unique signature for each fluorochrome. So with this method, we are seeing more photons, actually more information creates a very solid foundation for us to do a more in-depth characterization for each fluorochrome. Here you are seeing more signatures, and from their spectrum, you can tell each fluorochrome has its own characteristic. Some dyes like BUV395 is only excited by one laser, some dyes like ABC can be excited by all the lasers. For dyes, for example, like BU421 and BV75, although they can be excited by the same laser, but their emission signal in the violet is pretty different. BV421 shows more signal in the early violet channels, where 785 shows more signal in the late violet channels. So why do we care about this up and downs, why the signature matters? And the, here is one example explains why. I'm showing you two fluorochromes. One is a very popular dye that is PE. Another is a new dye called Seafloor YG584. As you can see, they can both be excited by the yellow-green laser and their yellow-green emission signal are very close. This means you won't be able to use those two dyes together in a conventional cytometer. Why? Because they are going to share the same filter. But with this full spectrum approach, we are not only looking at one slice of information from the yellow green emission signal, but also the emission signal from all other lasers and their differences. So all these differences are adding up together to help the software to distinguish PE from Seafloor YG584. So the end result is we can effectively using these two highly overlapping dyes together for co-express markers. Like in this panel, CD4, C4, YG584, and CD25PE. From plot, you can tell these T-Rex are being pulled out beautifully without any interference from CD4, C4, YG584. So the key here to successfully using two highly overlapping dyes are obviously about their signatures that they need to be different. So you, then you may ask how different the edge is actually different enough. For pair one, like BUV395 and APC, we can already tell it's very different just by looking at their signatures because their emission signal is so far away. But for pair two, it's getting a bit more challenging. Why? Because they can both be excited by all the lasers, their emission signal is kind of close, and their emission and their intensities are different. So for cases like this, we like to normalize their signatures first, so the intensity won't be in our way, and then overlay them together. With overlay, we can confirm that BUV395 and APC do not have any overlaps, and for pair two, yes, these two dyes are closer, but there are many sections of the signatures are different. So in these two cases, normalized spectrum overlay actually allows us to answer this question. But let's look for more examples. In this four pairs, yeah, well, obviously it's getting more difficult. Even with the overlay, we can still not for sure that we can see these two dye combinations can be used together. So what do we do? We have developed one matrix called Similarity Index that could quantitatively evaluate how close two dyes are. Basically, it compares those two normalized spectrum. It has a range from zero to one. One stands for the two spectrum are perfectly matching and zero stands for the two spectrum are completely different. The color coding looks like this. White is zero, dark blue is one. 
And for pen design, you want to select a more unique set of dies to work with. On the right, I'm showing you the normalized spectrum for pair one and pair two again. For pair one, again, visually, we already know there are no overlaps between these two dies. So not surprisingly, the similar index between these two dies is zero. And for pair two, because these two dies are closer and then the similar index between them is also higher, it went up to 0.86. And you can view more examples from the link down below. Okay, so now we have a specific number to tell us how close two dies are. And to make this number more meaningful, we always like to correlate the number with some biological data so you have a better visual clue. Here I'm showing you some merged single stain CD4. For pair one, similar index being zero. And you can see how well rounded the population look like. And for pair two, pair three, as the similar index went higher, my positive population also got wider and more elliptical looking. So, but the resolution and the, the separation is still there. For pair four, my similar index went up to one, and you can see how distorted the populations look like. And actually, we have tested more than 200 fluorochromes, and from our experience, if those two dyes have a similar index that is below than 0.98, that will mean you can use those two dyes together. And pair three is our cutoff example. But please remember if you are going to utilize these two dyes that have such high similar index, a good panel design is still required. And here are some real biological data. So through panel design, we are able to use these closed dyes together. So based on their similar index, you can either assign co-expressed or non-co-expressed markers for them. For example, for pair six, BU421 and the super bright 436 are paired with non-co-expressed markers. Although despite they have such high similar index, these two markers, CCR7 and CD123, are both resolved very well. Now we already know how to deal with two color scenarios. So what happens when we work with more than two dice? Okay, let's see again where I have this base pair of fluorocrons, B421 and the super bright 436. In one case, I would like to add one close die, E450, and in another case, I added a pretty far away die from B421 and the 436, that is PE. So how to assess this whole die combination? And obviously we're seeing more than one similarity indices. So is there a way to aggregate all the similarity indices? Then we developed another matrix called complex index. Basically, it can quantitatively assess the whole die combination. And overall, it measures the uniqueness of all the dyes that are used. The lower the complex index is, means easier combination of dyes to work with. So here are again correlates with some CD4 data here. For the base sphere, it has a complex index of 7.42. For combination one, because I added E flow for 50, my positive populations got wider. My negative population also got elongated. And guess what? My complex index also went higher. As for combination two, PE was added. You can see from the plot, the population didn't change at all. My complex index also didn't change either. Okay, now it's the time to select more fluorocarbons. And here in this slide, I'm showing you two fluorochrome combinations. In the first one, it's utilizing dyes that are more away from each other, and that leads to a lower complex index. In combination two, the dyes it's using are closer to each other, which leads to a higher complex index. If you look closer, the shades of the blue in the combination one, which are the color coding for the similar indexes are actually lighter than the shades in combination two. So that means our combination one will be the easier one to work with. Okay, now we have this 10 colors which are very good away from each other. And let's see, we use this as a backbone to add five more colors into it. If I'm choosing my dyes carefully, choosing the dyes are more away from the existing dyes, I'm looking at the similar index and choosing the lower ones, I could easily maintain a low complex index as well. On the other hand, if I'm just throwing random dyes into this original panel and I could easily end up using very close dyes together, and that can be also indicated by this high similar indexes. And please expect to see a higher complex index as well. So if you use this panel, you are also going to face more challenges to get better resolution out of it.
Now let me show you what would happen, what you will see in your biological data if you try to use very close dyes together. One way to assess if a dye combination is working successfully is actually to look at the negative populations because the negative cells tells you how much spread you have in your panel. And for easier understanding, I'm going to go back to two color scenario. In the first example, Fitzy versus Fitzy, they are the same dyes. If you try to mix them, you're going to see a diagonal. For Fitzy and for 88, they are almost identical. Probably they have a similar index of 0 0.999 and has been rounded up to one. It has a very high complex index. 28 is pretty high given it's only a two color combination. So, and you can also see how distorted the negative looks like. And my resolution is also heavily impacted. We, so we do not recommend use these two dyes together. For Fitzy and BB15, the complex index went down to 9.5, although my negative is still a little bit squished, slanted, uh, but I still have pretty decent resolution. So with good panel design, I should still be able to use these two dyes effectively. Okay, as for Fitzy and Alexa Floor 532, the complex index went down to 1.8. Not too much to worry about here. Fitzy and APC, it went down to 1.1. So this will be the easiest combination to work with. In the last two cases, you can see how well-rounded the population, the negative relations look like. So our goal is to maintain a good looking of the negative cells. So that also translated to maintain a low complex index for the whole panel. So by now we should already have selected a very good dye combination that has very little spillover into each other. So what's the other considerations for panel design? One of them will be the dye brightness. In this slide, I'm showing you the stain index ranking for a total of 70 fluorochromes that are stained with anti-human CD4. With knowing this information, that helps you to pair the dye brightness with the antigen expression level so that you can ensure each antigen can be resolved well. So besides the brightness, we also need to take care of the spreading. But how to quantify the spread? Actually, the basic spectrum already tells you a lot. If you overlay them, you can see they are heavily overlapping. That will translate to a higher similar index and also a higher complex index. This we already know from our previous slides. But if you look closer into the statistics of the normalized spectrum, you are going to see, let's see if these two dyes share the same brightness. BB15 actually has 14% more spill over into FITSI. And how does this translate to the biological data? And in this CD4 plot, you can see because B15 has most be over into Fitzy and it's brighter, you can see the SSM value from BB15 into Fitzy is higher than the SSM value from Fitzy to B15. So with knowing this spreading information that actually guided us to pair B15 with a lower express antigen and pair Fitzy with probably medium express antigen. And those two markers better not to be co-expressed. And in, in, in the right, I'm showing you the real biological data in this panel, CD57 FITC and the CD141 BB15 are both resolved very well. And finally, here's one example where it considers the flow from selection and panel design strategies I just talked about. So we are able to combine lots of fluorochromes, lots of markers, and most importantly, each marker is resolved very well. And that's the whole story. Thank you so much for your attention.